recording yet? No, I'm getting there. It is. Now we're recording. Hey, everybody, welcome. Uh, special thank you to Richard and Scott with Vocal Point for joining us. Um, this is going to be a 30 minute uh, casual conversation to learn more about this opportunity. For those of you who are joining us today, um, feel free to unmute yourselves, jump in if you have a question or if you're more comfortable, type it into the chat box and Blair and I will kind of monitor that. Um, so uh, Richard and Scott, let's, let's start with you guys because it's really unusual for us and it's really exciting to me to have two representatives um, from the same organization and you guys have different roles within the organization. Um, so Scott, why don't we start with you? Could you please introduce yourself? Tell us about um, Focal Point and your role with the company. Yeah, happy to, Emily and uh, Blair. I appreciate you guys having us on today. So I'm Scott Hartsfield. Uh, I currently live in the Durham, North Carolina area. Uh, and my role with Focal Point, I've been with Focal Point now for 10 years, and I head up the recruiting uh, component for Focal Point. So essentially, my job is to make sure that we're onboarding the right coaches, making sure that they're a good quality fit, not just for what our business does, but really about our culture. We are a business really centered around uh, a really positive why. We're here to make an impact. So I spent a lot of my time working with folks that are considering business ownership and business coaching specifically and seeing if it's a good fit. Good. And can you say briefly what Focal Point does? Sure. Yeah. So Focal Point is a business coaching company. Um, and so we work with business leaders and business leaders come in all types of fashions. They could be executive leaders. They could be small business owners. They could be entrepreneurs. And essentially what we've done is we've created a business coaching company to work directly with these leaders, sometimes the owners of these businesses, to improve the overall functionality of their business. Um, and so business coaching lives in asking the right key questions. Uh, and so I have with us today, Rich Scott. Rich Scott is actually one of our very own coaches. Uh, so he can actually give us some, um, some personal perspective from that angle. Excellent. Thanks. So Rich, that was a great way. Let's- Yeah, let's... I was just gonna say, nice segue, man. What a professional. <laughs> Yeah, so business coaching, my background was in uh, commercial equipment lease financing, did that for uh, almost 18 years. And um, when I, uh, similar to actually lease that was on, um, I built up a company in my sense, uh, got a nice package. And uh, the kind of exciting part with that was, is, you know, sitting down at an age where I was definitely not going to retire and do nothing, I was going to do something. And was able to ask some bigger questions of, you know, hey, what do I quote unquote want to be when I grow up? Or what do I want the next chapter to be like? And uh, was fortunate enough to be able to spend some time doing that. And when I reflected on my past experience, identified some key components that I really enjoyed and kind of played to my strengths. And that was working with people, developing teams, developing leaders, and trying to grow companies. And so it was that, that sort of intersection of what made me successful as a professional, which is key, um, but also the parts that I liked. And so that's usually the case is we're good at what we like and we like what we're good at. And so when I was deciding what to do in the next chapter, that's really what I focused in on. And uh, Focal Point was a great fit for that. That's excellent. And, and I, I mean, we, Blair and I, we work with a lot of the people that we work with that are exploring business ownership um, are oftentimes professionals, executives in yeah. career transition. Uh, and it, one of the common things I hear is, hey, in addition to maybe buying a business, I'm thinking about starting my own independent consulting practice. I've got 10, 20 years experience in this specific area, if you will. And, and I think there are a lot of advantages to starting an independent consulting practice, um, but there's also some things that can be missing, like building equity, if you will, and other things. So can you tell me if someone's kind of weighing their options, um, how does Focal Point compare with someone just starting their own independent consulting business? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come on to uh, I'll comment on that one because that was definitely on, on my list of things that I considered doing. Oh, was and, it really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In okay. fact, um, how I found Focal Point was actually researching, doing market research in launching my own practice. Okay, and uh, I was trying to find answers to two areas, um, and the first one was 
kind of around what I call the credibility in the sense that uh, I recognize there's a power in a brand and a power in an organization more than just myself. And I had experienced that in my past careers. Uh, and then the second part is sort of the, um, what I'll, I'll just put under the umbrella of content is that um, doing it on my own, uh, I, I understood that, hey, there's kind of four things to do in a professional services business, if you, if you simplify it. You know, you've got your marketing side, you've got your sales activities where you've got leads, you've done proposals, and now you have to close them. And uh, number three is you've got to actually deliver the professional services, whatever that is. Um, and then number four is some administration. And so when I was looking at the content side of doing the professional services, I realized, wow, what do I enjoy doing? And it was really around the delivery. And so uh, I was willing to consider writing a check to fill in the gaps in the other parts uh, because that was kind of what my desire was like, hey, I'm looking back at what I like to do as a professional and I had a lot of people around me, <laughs> okay? It wasn't just me. And so that was the big thing that was in the, in the top of my mind. Emily was, um, if I do this on my own, there's some pros. Um, if I do it with an organization, the pros of that definitely outweighed the cost of doing it. So that, that's sort of where I came from. Anything you want to add on that, that Scott? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's perfect. I mean, that's a real life example right there, but it, it's a common question and it's always in the back of the minds of a lot of folks that are thinking of, get some echo there, uh, that are thinking of getting into this space. It comes down to, you know, you guys hearing that echo? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah just start hearing. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is a common thing that a lot of folks have and it really comes down to brand um, and content. You know, a lot of folks don't want to feel like they're out there. It comes, you know, to Rich's point, credibility, that they're out there, you know, coach, rich, LLC, trying to, trying to make it through, you know, everything out there. And so instantly when they join with, with Focal Point, they now have brand power. There's a couple hundred coaches that do this. Everything's in place. Websites in place. You know, the, 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 the logo is in place, the color, all that stuff. You're not creatively having to think about. You're, 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 you're buying into that already. Um, and then a lot of it really comes down to content. Like, okay, you've got a lot of experience. What are you going to talk about, right? And, and how are you going to keep a client's attention for years and years, not weeks and months? And, and that's where Focal Point plays is we keep our clients for a very long term. And so it really just cuts you straight in line. Um, you know, I say, hey, if you've got 18, 24 months where you want to you know, completely devote your life to building this out, have fun. But if you want to start coaching, you know, next month, you know, this is, <laughs> this can get you there a lot quicker. Yeah. Well, so, it's funny you say that, Scott, too, because um, my focus when I started was really just that launch, if you will, which I think a lot of people is. Uh, and now having been a coach with, with Focal Point almost 13 years, um, mm -hmm. there's things that I hadn't anticipated that help after that, you know, so at the beginning when I'm starting, it was a lot about the fears, the uncertainty, the unknown. I think everyone has that regardless of the industry or business or even a, a position in a, in a career. Um, but then the next one is that solidifying. And it's like, how do I make sure the foundation's there for the third phase, which is kind of scaling it up? And that's really you know, what I was looking for down the road. And that is kind of the future. So um, doing it on my own, I, uh, that's the part I hadn't thought of of having componentry in place to scale. Like Scott mentioned, having 200 other coaches around the world, so I'm not on the own. Uh, if I come across an opportunity that's beyond my own capacity, I don't pass on it. I actually can bring in some extra people with it. So those are things that I now kind of see, but I hadn't thought of afterwards, yeah. So a couple of questions have come through. Um, one super easy uh, for Harsh, uh, the URL address, so the website address for Focal Point. Yeah, uh, it's focalpointcoaching.com. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's Focal in stereo. Coaching. There you go. <laughs> yep. So I've often described um, when, when clients come to me and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about becoming a consultant. I said, hey, take a look at Focal Point. Very quickly, I say, hey, it's a way of becoming a consultant, but putting it on steroids. <laughs> yeah that's right. actually really good yeah because yeah. you're launching very quickly you got all the support the brand name everything that if you're an independent consultant that's what you got to figure out on your own granted like you said hey i got to pay for it with focal point but it launches yep. you a lot quicker 
quick question. And again, for the group, if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and ask away or put it into the chat box. But I'll ask a question that is normally asked of me when I'm talking to my clients about focal point is, especially in today's day and age and what's happening with businesses is, are businesses, are they, are they hiring business consultants? Are they hiring coaches right now? Yeah, I, I, I can say that because I started in, uh, remember back way, way, way in, in 08, <laughs> right? So there was, there was a small financial thing that maybe came up. Um, yeah, so uh, the answer is resounding yes, okay? Um, and so this is, a, a, it, it sounds like a pre-prepared answer because of what's going on, but uh, owners that are growing want to grow regardless of what's going on, right? Like there's kind of four spectrums. So in a good economy or bad economy, we work with owners um, that follow, you know, that there are kind of two of them. At one end of the spectrum, you got companies that are doing super successful, okay? You've got at the other end of the spectrum, companies that aren't gonna be around. When the economy changes, it doesn't influence that, it just shows it. <laughs> Okay, like Blockbuster isn't around, it, it, but their business model didn't work. There's okay. one. There's yeah. one. one and it's here uh, in Ben. Well, no, there's <laughs> one one. The story that I just heard is they're even shutting down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, but in the middle, you've kind of got two different uh, scenarios where the leaders or owners of those organizations either say, um, hey, we're going to tread water until things get better. And just think about that for a second. The mentality is uh, there's not much we can do. We just have to kind of tread water. And now we think of that as COVID right now, but before it was the financial crisis. And then the other one says, hey, there's a new reality and we have to change. In fact, we get to change. And those are the clients that hire consultants and coaches because they want to grow. And that's one of the cool things in what we do is um, as a business coach, I can't really sell it. Like I'm looking for owners that want to grow and they want, you know, I phrase it as a non-equity partner to help them grow. And those are the people that I get excited to work with because the other ones, it's like trying to go to the gym. Someone sells you a gym membership. Uh, I don't really want a gym membership. Okay. So I don't show up. And if I don't show up, then I'm not going to stay there. But the people that want to achieve something, those are the people that hire business coaches. It's pretty exciting. Gotcha. Yeah. So everybody on this call, uh, I think everybody is either from the states of Idaho or Oregon, correct? Mm -hmm. So what's kind of the status of Focal Point in that area and who are you looking for as potential franchisees or coaches for Focal Point in this area? Yeah, so both of those markets for us, you know, are, are wide open. We're looking for, you know, several coaches in both of those markets. And, you know, the ideal fit, the ideal coach that we're really looking for is, you know, like, like Richard talked about in his experience, we're looking for somebody that has, you know, good, solid business experience. And we call that, you know, 15, 20 plus years of, you know, business, you know, leadership type of experience. Because in those roles, these are folks that have typically led teams, developed people. And, and a lot of that, you're doing coaching and mentoring. So when they think about, you know, business coaching via focal point, a lot of what we do is very similar to what they did in their current role. So in both of those markets, lots of room for coaches, um, ideally folks that, you know, have had leadership experience that want to, you know, translate that experience into their next business. Okay, very good. Questions from the attendees. I, I, Emily and I don't want to hog it, so... I have a question about the technology. So one of the, the, the biggest challenges, um, you know, starting your own business, obviously, is, is technology, whether it's marketing or whether it's providing the deliverable, et cetera. Um, can you talk about the technology support that is available? So now you're an independent consultant on steroids. Like, what does that mean from techno technological support? Do you want to cover the front end, Scott? Yeah. So on the technical side, you know, so all of our con, we have a, uh, a library that houses all of our content. So instantly when a coach joins, they have full access to our entire coaching library that houses everything. 
So we built an entire process around that. And so instantly we're going to be able to set up their website automatically, set up their LinkedIn properly so that they're linking that uh, for their social media standpoint. Um, and so a lot of it just lives within the library. Rich, you use it regularly. You want yeah. to dive in a little bit more? Yeah. So um, the, the library is actually a wiki based. So um, you can search on any term. You don't have to understand where it's at. A brand new incoming coach can just put in uh, a question to find any of the information. In addition to that, um, our training for onboarding incoming coaches has utilized technology, you know, right from the beginning when I started. So there is a combination of reading, video, and in-person live training. So that's all automated. On the, uh, on the backside of now I'm coaching with clients, this is one of the things that attracted me is that you can leverage technology in the sense that I have clients not only on the West Coast of Canada, US, but I also have clients in Europe, Australia, because technology allows that to happen. So uh, it's not location restricted in the sense of, um, yeah, I do a presentation for um, a conference and there's people from all over the word that world there. I can still coach them just being cognizant of their time zone. That's the only kind of restriction is either they or I might have a, a, a need to make a shift for time zone. Yeah. This is Victor, can you hear me? Yeah. I have a question in terms of the territory. So are you restrictive in terms of, so Idaho, uh, Boise, uh, whatever, are you restricted in terms or do you have conflicting coaches available with each of those more than one? Yeah, so you know, there's, no there's no restrictions with regards to territory. So again, going back to our culture, we have a very collaborative uh, culture. So a lot of our coaches collaborate and work with each other. So our coaches technically can market, you know, advertise, promote their business anywhere in the entire state that they live in. However, they can coach a client anywhere in the world like Rich is talking about. So a lot of our business comes to us through referrals. And so going back to Rich's comment about business coaching being bought, not sold, we're typically not in a situation where we're pitching and selling uh, direct to clients. A lot of times we're being referred into business. And sometimes those referrals that come to us come to us in different states. And we're able to coach those clients, even if it's outside of the state that we live in. So the answer to your question is no, there's no territory lines where you're prohibited from coaching. Uh, you just can't really go and advertise your services outside the state you live in. I have another question, if I can, with regard to sure. um, the business types of entities that you market to or have your coaches market to. I've been in healthcare for a long time. I've also been in other businesses, utility and so on. Do you have uh, so-called areas of uh, marketing that you focus on in terms of business? It's a good question. Uh, it really changes from coach to coach. And so we do have, you know, some, some, some information on some of the areas we've done a lot of coaching and healthcare is one of them. I know Rich did a lot of coaching in, in, the, in the healthcare realm. Um, it really does, you know, Matt, you know, it, it differentiates from coach to coach. We really focus in on t really the size of business because a lot of the, 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 the reality is, is really any business can use coaching. Um, so it's not that we're a consultant where we have to have deep level expertise in specific areas. So even if we were coaching in healthcare, it's not that we have expertise in healthcare. It just happens to be that healthcare is a great opportunity that needs coaching. Um, so we can coach through all industries and we do have several that work. Uh, Rich cracked the nut in healthcare. Rich, you want to talk a little bit about some of your, your coaching and the industry yeah. you work with? Yeah. I'm just going to, um, build on what Scott said. So, um, in my practice, I, it, I get to choose who I want to have as a client, right? Like, like I, I know that seems a little bit counterintuitive. It's like, well, where is, where is all the client? There's enough clients. There's more clients than I can serve. And so the cool part is, is I get to serve, choose who I want to have as clients that I like. So I had a background in financing some of the equipment in healthcare. Didn't, you know, it didn't know it too well, uh, but basically said, okay, well, who already serves the people there? And this is how professionals, we, you know, we probably all nod our head on this. We normally do business like, hey, who do I know at such and such company or such and such industry and who can do an introduction? And um, my strategy was, hey, 
who already serves them? Who has a relationship and how can I help them? And so when I looked at healthcare, I realized, hey, there's three or four major equipment suppliers. And I went to a couple of the top uh, people at those companies. And I said, outside of just selling to your clients or putting out fires with them, what do you do to add value or differentiate? And uh, I kind of chuckle now because the response is, well, we, we don't get paid to do anything else. That, that's what we get paid to do. And uh, the value proposition was, hey, why don't we run a series of talks, uh, what we normally charge three or $4,000 a person for, for your clients, and you'll be positioned as the sponsor. And you're bringing in a business coach. So worst case scenario, you look fantastic for just helping them grow their business. Best case scenario, they grow their business, they have more to invest with you, okay? And so uh, we run a workshop that we'd already had for that, that industry and the people that were in the industry that wanted more information, they just checked it off in the feedback form and that's how we follow up. So that sort of gives you an insight of how we market to an, um, a client profile, if you will, that I wanna have in my practice. Does that help? Any questions? Yeah, I normally get questions after that. <laughs> yeah, that helps. Yeah. And then the, can I ask another question? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm interested in, in knowing how during this um, time of the uh, virus and so on, how are you reaching out to businesses and how receptive? And that might have been answered a little bit earlier, but I'd appreciate a little more input. Are you doing a lot of remote type of coaching? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so five and a half, six years ago, uh, because of what I just shared with you, that grew larger and larger. Um, I would say 95 of my percent of my practice went virtual this way because you can have multiple people in it. You can record it. Um, there's just so many advantages to it. And then we would supplement that with in person. So when the virus uh, came and people had to work remotely, there wasn't really a shift. There was not even really a speed bump uh, in, in our business. Yeah, I remember a, a common question. People would say, how, how are you guys adjusting to this whole work from home, you know, video conference? I'd say, this has been, this has been our world for the last four or five years. This is what yeah. we do. Um, so there wasn't this major adjustment. Um, and it's been great because we've been able to, because a lot of folks, the great thing about it is a lot of other folks that we've been trying to connect with have now adjusted to that. So it's made our, you know, virtual, you know, Zoom, you know, introductions a lot more normal because, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of the norm now. So it's been great for us. Yeah, everyone knows what Zoom is. Uh, 24 <laughs> months ago, we were like, what? <laughs> it's like FaceTime, but with multiple people. Yeah. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Victor? It does. Thank you. Any other questions from the field? Well, I still, I guess I still have another question with regard to a little bit of more information about the focal point. Can we have a little more information about the organization? You gave us some, but can we have a little yeah. bit more in terms of uh, how uh, you develop your clientele and how, primarily, I guess, how you develop your coaches, how you receive them uh, and so on. And I don't know if that's to come later or if there's an opportunity to share a little bit of that now. Yeah, that's yeah. a good question. Yeah. So, you know, part of this process, uh, you know, the, the goal for today is, you know, obviously just kind of give you a little bit of insight and we can dive in just a little bit deeper. But if you do find an interest in learning more, there's a lot more longer conversations to really unpack all of this. Um, you know, and we take you through that process. You get a chance to connect with several coaches. We'll kind of take a, uh, you know, kind of a dive into the process itself. But you know, Focal Point, we've been around since 2004. You know, one of the original founders of our business is a gentleman by the name of Brian Tracy. Uh, you can Google him. He's written several books. He's, uh, you know, um, he's a business coach himself, spoken all over the world. Um, and we have developed content uh, around, you know, Brian Tracy and his business and, and really, you know, have created this content and packaged it in the process so that folks that, that love the idea of coaching can adopt that content and create their own business out of it. Um, and so we have an entire certification training program. So a lot of our coaches that are joining Focal Point, this is actually the first business that they've ever owned before. And so we're not just teaching our, our coaches or incoming coaches how to coach. 
we're teaching them how to build a coaching practice as well, which gets into client acquisition, the sales process, the onboarding process, keeping clients. Uh, every single one of our coaches has a coach. So built into our certification, we have ongoing certification, but we have ongoing mentorship programs as well. So every single coach is being weekly coached by their own coach as well. So all of that's built right into it. And so as a part of this process and learning, if this might be a good fit for you, uh, we'll kind of walk you through all of that. And then you get a chance to talk with our actual coaches. We've got several coaches in our business like Rich, um, and you can really start to see if what they're doing matches up with what you're excited about doing. Okay, thank you. Yeah, what, about financial, what about financially, Scott? Obviously it costs money to get into Focal Point. You guys do yeah. have a, um, yeah. a financial threshold that you're looking for. Can you kind of share that with everybody? Yeah, happy to. So the initial investment, uh, we're just under $70,000 initial investment. Um, that includes everything, your franchise fees, your training fees, you know, a few startup fees. Uh, that's your initial investment that you'll pay. Once you get that, you are now in as a franchisee, a coach. You're going to have access to everything that we've talked about to date, and you'll begin your certification and training process with us. Uh, monthly, there is a royalty. Every single coach pays a royalty. Uh, in the first year, we ramp you up. We start you off at a lower flat rate fee, and we do a flat rate coaching fee. It's not tied to revenue. Um, so it's a very you know, predictable, uh, consistent number. Um, and then once you're in your second year, you're, you're staying at a flat rate fee for the next you know, uh, five years, I believe. Um, and so that's the royalty structure. There's a marketing fee associated with that as well. Um, one of the benefits, and this is kind of ties us back to the beginning of our discussion, uh, independent coaching versus you know, a, a solid foundation through focal point coaching is because our content and our process is so rich, most of our coaches are seeing themselves charging a much higher fee than your quote unquote typical independent coach. Um, and so in a lot of cases, the coaching fee that we would charge just one single client typically will cover what your royalty would be on a monthly basis. Um, so that's, so it's a, you know, under 70 K flat rate monthly royalty, the monthly royalty cost once you're up and running is about $1,800 per month. Very good. Rich, Rich anything? No, I, I, I just always uh, joke it's a flat fee. <laughs> so if I have one client, it's paid for and it doesn't go up. And uh, yeah, please don't ever change that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I because, think one of... Yeah, otherwise you're like kind of penalizing high performers. It's like, oh, great. I get you know, multiple clients. I got to pay more. Like, mm. yeah. Um, but, but that just speaks to the culture at, at, at Focal Point, right? Like it, it, it's, a, it's more of a partnership than, it, uh, than the mentality that I had of, of a, a franchise or a franchisee type thing. Yeah. yeah. Any last minute questions? Yeah, I have one. So I'm just curious to know how do the potential businesses find the coaches within Focal Point? Do they kind of go through your website or are the coaches expected to market themselves and find their own clients? It's a good question. Uh, it's a little bit of both, right? So if it depends on, you know, how you're, you're structuring your business. And so if you're really heavy on, you know, uh, social media, you, you're, you know, and you have your SEO together, you're going to attract some business. But a lot of it really comes through, you know, how Rich described it, you know, through connecting with people that serve the types of businesses that you're looking to serve. So one of the things that we help you do when you come on board as a coach is identify your ideal client. Who do you see yourself coaching? What type of impact do you see yourself making? And once we've made that identification, then we can identify businesses, people that serve that exact industry. And what we do through our certification is teach you how to go out and find those and, and, and connect with them because they can connect you to their client. Go ahead, Rich. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, uh, we use what's called a, a Parthenon principle. So there's going to be four or five different principles you can apply to your strategy. Um, so the answer of how I market my practice is a little bit different on purpose. It's tailored to who I want to have as a client. So it's always going to be a combination of what I'm doing plus technology plus paid advertising pay, plus SEO. So that that's going to have a little bit of a different mix. So uh, the, the big answer that I was going to jokingly jump in and go, well, a classic professional. Well, it depends, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the key is that when you know who you want to have serve as a client, 
um, we have plenty of systems to, to design a marketing system for you. That's great. Emily, do you want to wrap us up and talk about next steps if anybody has any interest? Yeah, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us, Richard and Scott, yeah. and thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining us. Uh, the next step, if you're interested in learning more about Focal Point, if you haven't already, uh, to complete the entrepreneur profile, Blair and I can send out a link to that just to make sure that you have access to that. Uh, we'll have a conversation with you and, and talk about your goals. And if, if it sounds like Focal Point could be a great fit, we'll gladly introduce you to Scott to take you through the discovery process. So be on the lookout for a follow-up email from Blair or I. Um, Richard, Scott, thank you again for your time and providing us so much information and your expertise today. It was my pleasure. I appreciate you having us on. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, you everyone. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. You thank Bye. you.